Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Let's talk about punching. No, I'm not talking about this kind of punching. I'm talking about this kind of punching. Although Gregor did threaten to punch me. <laughs> it's fine. We have the Atlantic Ocean between us. It's fine. Okay, so here's what we're talking about. Back in the old days, analog tape, if you recorded something and then you made a mistake or you wanted to punch in a section again, the engineer had this big honking remote control for the tape machine and he would he or she would press the record button to punch you in and then press it again to punch you out. We thankfully don't have to do it that way because if you messed it up, you were done. You had to just go re-record the whole thing or punch in a bigger section because it was kind of permanent. So let me, let's me let demonstrate the different ways we can punch in in Studio One because it's a lot more fun than in the tape days. So let's record something real quick. One, two, eight, four. All right, wonderful recording, but I messed up that third phrase. So the first way, there, there's kind of two big categories for punching in in Studio One. There's automatic and there's manual. Let's talk about the manual way first because it's fairly simple and easy to do, and it's something I use a fair amount, especially if I'm just sitting here doing some background vocals. And all you have to do is have a keyboard shortcut for the record button. Mine is actually this little, is that a backslash or forward slash? I never know. The one next to the open and close brackets just below the backspace key. That's my record button. So that's what I use to begin this recording. That's also what I can use to punch in and punch out. So here's the recording we got. One, two, eight, four. Okay, we're gonna need to get that third line right. I was off by five. So what we can do is we can just hit play and when we get to that third line, I can punch myself in and punch myself out. Let's try it. One, two, three, four. All right, so you can see I did a bad job of punching it in. Were this on analog tape, we're done for. Thankfully, we're in a digital system, so I can actually do this number right here. Whoop! And then I can click here, and I can go whoop! And guess what? Now we have one, two, three, four. Now we can say, oh, that wasn't right. It was I held it out for too long. Let's do it again, and that's fine. We can undo, and we can try it again. So I'm just pressing my record button until I get it right. One, two, three. Okay, let's see how that one worked. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Now we've got our punch in. But let's say we're it's not as simple as this. Maybe we don't want to manually punch it in and out. Uh, maybe we're playing guitar or some instrument. We don't have our hands free to just do the punching or we're recording for someone else and we just want to know it's going to punch in at the right spot. This is where some of the automatic functionality comes into play. So the first one we'll talk about is pre-roll. So if you look at the bottom of the window in Studio One, down here, you've got all these funny little shapes and if you hover over them, they'll tell you what they are. So this one is pre-roll. This one is auto punch. And you'll notice the keyboard shortcut is O, letter O for pre-roll, and I for auto punch. These are two super handy modes that I use all the time. So pre-roll looks like this. I can say, hey, Joe, you really messed up at the word three, and everything after that was garbage. So I loved one and two, but can we just start at three and keep recording? and that can work just fine. That's a situation where we would use pre-roll. I press O, and you can see down here that turned red. Now, if looking at my metronome settings, I can see that my pre-roll is set to two bars. That's my default setting, which means if I hit record right now, it's gonna go back two bars, play two bars for me, and then start recording at exactly the point that I set. So I could have it be like right there, and I could say, all right, Joe, I got two bars before. And then he says, okay, Joe, you're a great engineer. And I say, thanks, Joe, you're a great artist, wonderful talent. Then I press record. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can keep going all day. See what happened? So there was a defined start time to this, but it's just gonna continue recording forever. This is great if you're recording a vocal and they flub the lyrics in a verse and say, hey, can I go back? And you say, sure, two bars before the verse and we're great. That was a little confusing because it didn't start on the downbeat. We could also do it here and say, hey Joe, can you just start right at the one? And I say, sure thing, two bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, 
buckle my shoe. I didn't get that right either. So you can see how now we can just say we're going to start here and you're going to hear two bars before. Musicians get really used to that pretty quickly. And I've had set players here recently where I'm saying, okay, two bars before, okay, two bars before, okay, two bars before. And I just leave it in pre-roll mode for the bulk of that first tracking session or that first take or that whenever they're doing full takes. And then once they're done, if they say, hey, I really want to punch in a section, that's when I move over to, I press I on the keyboard and I can move over to the auto punch mode. Now this one's a little bit different. This one is more like what we did at the beginning where I was punching in and punching out, except we can tell Studio One to do it for us. And the way we do that is with our loop points. In case you didn't know, this little bar up here is our loop selection. You may have thought of it as only being useful for looping things <laughs> because it's called the loop selection, but um, it's actually super handy when it's not looping. So when the loop is on, whoops, when the loop is on, that's the other slash button, it will do this. Three, 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 three. That's not super helpful. But when it is off, it serves as a marker point. So we can say, if I said, man, I really want to punch in that three, I really didn't get it right. We can set this to the exact in and out points that we want. Then all we have to do is just come back a few bars and just press record from back here. And it's not going to record until it gets into this loop section and then it's going to stop recording when it gets back out. So I'm going to press record and I'm not going to touch anything else and watch what happens. One, two, three. Buckle my shoe. See what happened? Now we've got one, two, three, four. Buckle. It punched in and punched out for me. So we can do this in a number of ways. We can say, okay, I want to punch in two and three, but not four. So we say, okay, rewind a few bars and say, bam. One, two, three, four, buckle my shoe. And now we punch that in beautifully. One, two, three, four, buckle my shoe. <laughs> to review, manual punch, just press the record button whenever you wanna punch in. That can be helpful if you're getting really crazy and you're like, I just wanna punch in two and four. One, two, eight, four. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. One, two, eight, four. So we can punch in. It's getting a little crazy there, but that's the manual mode. Pre-roll, letter O, allows you to record from where the playhead is, but it's going to let you hear two bars before it starts recording. And then auto punch lets you start recording from anywhere, but it's only going to start playback until it gets to the loop section, and that's the only section it's going to record. All right, that's it for this video. Happy punching. Don't tell Gregor I told on him.